Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Process Analysis, Lecture B. The objectives for this lecture are to perform a process analysis for a given clinic scenario, given results of a process analysis, draft a summary report, and given results of a process analysis, identify desired EMR functionality. In Lecture B of this unit, Process Analysis, we will focus on common process variations and exceptions in the clinic, including patient check-in, patient visit, prescription, receive documentation, labs and diagnostic tests, referral and consults, disease management, billing. We will assess how they impact process analysis and how process analysis is used ultimately in identifying electronic health record, EHR, functionality. Remember from Lecture A that process variations are processes used by the clinic, i.e., the way a particular clinic does something, i.e., the clinic's process. They are called variations because they vary from clinic to clinic. There should be a process diagram for the variation or variations used by the clinic. Remember also that process exceptions are errors or common odd things that occur during the clinic's processes. They are important to note because EHR functionality needs to cover expected exceptions and needs to have a generic way to handle the unexpected. On the following slides, we will list common process variations and exceptions for processes used by most clinics. Common process variations for patient check-in include new patient intake and registration, existing patient intake and registration, and walk-in intake and registration. Exceptions for the patient check-in include no insurance, non-covered service, and change in insurance information. There are many variations for patient office visits. A few of them are referral out needed, procedure needed, and diagnostic tests needed. Likewise, there are many possible exceptions that may occur during an office visit. Some of them include emergent reason to stop the visit, a non-covered service needing a separate visit, and the need to be seen by a different provider. The common variations on the prescription process include paper prescriptions provided during the office visit, electronic prescriptions provided during the office visit, a refill call-in prescription needed, and other call-in prescription needed. For example, a patient on an antibiotic is out of town and not getting better, calls their provider, and asks for a different prescription. Common exceptions or errors that can occur during a prescription process include no insurance or a non-covered service, samples provided, prescriptions need to be sent to multiple pharmacies, and the prescription can't be filled at a pharmacy. Filing or otherwise associating documents received from external sources, for example, emergency room visits, hospital discharge summaries, reports from procedures, and diagnostic tests with a patient's records can be a lot of work for a primary care clinic. Common process variations include the format of the received document, paper or electronic, and whether or not the information in the document necessitates follow-up with the patient. For example, a discharge summary that lists a discharge prescription for a medication that is redundant with one the patient was taking prior to hospitalization, a hospitalization for a poorly controlled chronic condition, or a hospital discharge summary that indicates necessary follow-up with the primary care provider. Common exceptions with external documents include inadequate patient identification, inadequate source identification, and unintelligible or ambiguous information. Common lab variations include sample taken in clinic and test done in clinic, sample taken in clinic, test done externally, and sample and test done at central lab. Lab exceptions, on the other hand, include bad sample, need another blood draw, for example, lab results not received, and lab results not physiologically possible. Diagnostic tests vary widely depending on the type of practice. Common diagnostic test variations include the following. Tests done in clinic. Tests done externally. 
report expected, and image or test result data expected. Similarly, diagnostic test exceptions include no insurance, non-covered service, test error, unintelligible results, and results from external test not received. Generally, but not always, primary care providers refer out to specialists, and specialists receive requests for consults from primary care providers and from other specialists. Referral variations include paper referral communicated by the patient, paper provider to provider, electronic referral, and referrals for one patient to multiple providers. Referral exceptions include referee does not accept the referral. Variations to the consult prescription can be paper or phone request, as well as electronic. Exceptions for the consult can be no insurance or a non-covered service, as well as a consult no-show. Disease management is a process where a provider follows established clinical guidelines to care for a patient with a chronic condition or conditions. The guidelines describe what tests should be performed to assess how the patient is faring and the test frequency, as well as the patient treatment. Disease management can be accomplished with paper charts or with electronic decision support. Disease management exceptions include insufficient data, data errors, care fragmentation, and contraindictions. Billing is a core process of any practice. Some billing variations are using a paper superbill, i.e., the sheet that providers use to check off tests and write diagnoses on during the visit as the source. Electronic data recorded by providers during the visit as the source where the coding is done and whether or not billing and collections are done externally. Billing exceptions include no insurance or non-covered service, claim denied, coding errors, and data errors. In summary, a main part of process analysis is creating an inventory of processes that a practice uses and identifying the variations of those processes employed by the practice and the likely exceptions. These things together help identify the EHR functionality. Start with the process inventory and diagrams. Include context diagrams showing clinic functions and flowcharts for each process. For each process, list the variations applicable to the clinic and all exceptions. Finally, report findings such as major observations, EHR functionality necessary to support clinic functions, and opportunities for improvement to the management. Let's work an example. After these instructions, pause the slideshow and work this example on your own. We will go over the results on the next few slides. Suburban Family Clinic, like most other clinics today, uses a phone scheduling process to schedule patient office visits. As a process analyst working with Suburban Family Clinic, you have listed appointment scheduling on the process inventory. Read the by phone appointment scheduling scenario in the course materials. First, draw a role-based flowchart of the process. Second, indicate the process variations used by Suburban Family Clinic. Third, make a list of exceptions likely to occur with this process. Pause the slides now. In this scenario, patient Patty wakes up at 5.30 a.m. feeling awful and decides to call for an appointment with her primary care provider. She calls Suburban Family Clinic. The important steps to diagram are those that directly interface with the clinic in some way. In this scenario, we do not need to represent anything about what time the patient calls or why she decided to call. It is just important to diagram the trigger event, i.e., the patient desires an office visit and the step that interfaces with the clinic, i.e., the patient calls the clinic. Next in the scenario, receptionist Ronald answers patient Patty's call and patient Patty asks receptionist Ronald for the soonest appointment with Dr. Dan. Here, the steps answering the phone and requesting a provider are added to the diagram. Next in the scenario, receptionist Ronald states that 9.30 is the earliest possible appointment with Dr. Dan, and patient Patty says that 9.30 is fine. Receptionist Ronald adds her to the schedule for 9.30. Each of these steps, 
finding and stating the next available time, the patient's decision that the time is okay, and scheduling the appointment are important interactions and are added to the diagram. Some questions that you might have are as follows. Why did we leave out the detail of patient Patty's symptoms and her deciding whether or not to call for an appointment? These details are not important to the clinic's process or the interaction between the patient and the clinic. Thus, they do not provide any information important to our analysis of the clinic process. Why did we include detail about whether or not the next available time is okay? This information signifies a possible branch point in the process, i.e., that the receptionist needs to look for additional times and that the times might not be agreeable to the patient. This information also signifies information needs by the receptionist. Note the decisions are necessary to outline the possible ways in which the process concludes. In the scenario, the appointment scheduling variation used by the clinic appears to be by phone scheduling. In your interactions with the clinic, the critical thing to discern is, is this the only variation used by the clinic? And what other variations occur? Importantly, process variations are processes used by the clinic. Process exceptions are errors or common odd things that occur during the process. Possible exceptions that may occur during the appointment scheduling process include the following. The receptionist doesn't answer, patient leaves message. Someone other than patient calls. The requested provider is not available. And the available appointment time slots are not acceptable. Some of the information gained from process analysis translates directly into EHR functionality. For example, the process variations, flow control between variations, and handling process exceptions. This is the information that we have covered thus far in this slide set. Often there are opportunities to make process changes, including leveraging technology. Such changes are decided during process redesign and also result in identification of necessary EHR functionality. In turn, an analyst's knowledge of available EHR functionality informs process redesign, i.e., the analyst who is familiar with available functions draws on this knowledge to suggest ways in which technology can be leveraged to improve processes. The end result of a process analysis is a list of 1. Clinic processes, i.e., the process variations used by the clinic, and 2. A list of common exceptions. For example, based on the process analysis, by phone appointment scheduling would be on the list for Suburban Family Clinic as would the listed exceptions. Let's work through an example of how to make a process and exception list. After the instructions, pause the slideshow and read the following scenarios in your course materials. By phone appointment scheduling. New patient intake and registration using paper chart. Existing patient intake and registration using paper chart and receiving and communicating lab results using paper chart. Create a process and exception list. On the next slide, we will go over the results. Pause the slides now. In the scenario, the appointment scheduling variation used by the clinic appears to be by phone scheduling. Possible exceptions that may occur during the appointment scheduling process include receptionist doesn't answer, Patient leaves message. Someone other than patient calls. Requested provider not available. And available appointment time slots not acceptable. The patient intake scenarios indicate the following processes. New patient intake and existing patient intake. Process exceptions that might be expected include no insurance, non-covered service, and patient has to leave during the intake process. The receiving and communicating lab results indicate the following processes. Lab sample processing at external lab. Lab sample acquisition, unknown from the scenario. Receiving lab results and communicating lab results. Lab process exceptions include no results received, results not matchable to a patient, 
Results not matchable to a provider. Results abnormal and require action. And patient not contactable, not responsive to contact attempts. The results of this process analysis would be compiled together in one document. This might be called a process analysis report. The list of processes and exceptions correspond directly to needed EHR functionality and ultimately will be included in a request for a proposal intended for EHR software vendors. A process analysis report should include information about the analysis, for example, the analyst's name and organization, dates of time on site, individuals for whom information was received, process inventory, process variations and exceptions, process diagrams, and a list of EHR functionality needed for the practice. If within the analyst's scope of work and training, suggested EHRs that are possible matches for the needed functions. This concludes Lecture B of Process Analysis. In this lecture, we covered process variations for common clinic processes, including patient check-in, patient visit, disease management, prescription, receive documentation, labs and diagnostic tests, referral and consults, billing, and process analysis and EHR functionality.